Hello and welcome to the next video of my MSI 2023 preview series where we're going to cover BLG, otherwise known as Billy Billy Gaming. They are the second seed from the LPL, losing to JDG over the weekend. Their coach is Tabe. You may know him formerly from RNG. He was RNG's head coach the last two MSIs in which they would be victorious. So he is returning for the third year in a row to try and defend his title, this time in some different colors. His two Worlds appearances in 2017 with, I think, Hong Kong Attitude. They were out in uh, play-ins. And then last Worlds out in quarterfinals with RNG. Um, it's kind of funny how RNG let him go mid-split. RNG having a lot of issues. Um, and um, while it was ironic, actually, he got tossed when Ming returned from his free agency stint. Making one wonder if Ming wanted him out of there. And then the team struggles. He signed with BLG late in the season, officially. And um, they got the job done. They righted the ship. This is a team that can match T1, can match JDG, and Gen G in terms of hands. There are very, very talented players and carry-oriented players on this team. The issue is trying to find out how it all fits together. Uh, in top lane, we have Ben. He's 32 and 11 over his career at international events, known for a pentakill on Fiora at Worlds 2020 with Sooning. Had a 2.49 KDA, 8.28 CS per minute, 53.8 KP in these two events. Ben is, in my opinion, the best laning top laner in the world. Lately, his um, play style has disappointed me, which we'll get into. Uh, but in terms of um, being in a lane straight up, I think he is exceptional. 423 damage per minute. Uh, sorry, 423 gold per minute. 515 damage per minute. 21 solo kills in these 43 games. And on average, only up 100 gold, 2 CS, 300 XP. As you get to the mid to late game, Ben tends to take over. Um, Worlds 2020, he would finish runner-up. And then at, at MSI um, 2022, he would win. So he has a first and a runner-up in his career in the two events he's been at. LPL playoff stats, keep in mind LPL does not give us the nice laning stats and solo kill stats that we would like to see. Um, so a 3.1 KDA, 8.2 CS per minute, 48 KP, this is the issue. 404 gold per minute, 461 damage per minute, not as aggressive as he's been at international events, not as aggressive in general. Um, there are many times during playoffs that Bin was on a solo mission in the side lane getting turrets but not really opening up a massive gold lead. If you remember game four, I've mentioned it a couple times since then um, from this past weekend. JDG was up 6K gold and Bin, I mean, BLG, JDG were up 6K gold, 15, seven in kills and Bin was 0, 0, 0 in the side lane on Fiora taking a turret. And yes, that's good. You're creating pressure, you're side laning, but he's not doing anything with it. His, goal, his CS lead was only like 14 at the time. It would then balloon to like 35 over the next few minutes. But by 29 minutes and that much of a gold deficit, the game is pretty much JDG's to throw. And 48 KP is very indicative of how he's been playing. Very solo dolo kind of action. And this meta is not that way. At least it hasn't been all spring long. Last year in spring, it was, you know, solo oriented a lot of top laners in the 47 to 53 range where um bin being at 48 in this meta a tad bit weird and out of character for top laners in in this present meta jungle we have shun shun has no international games under his belt he is a carry oriented jungler 110 percent um definitely best on carries i would argue one dimensional 3.6 KDA, 5.8 CS per minute, 70.6 KP, 368 gold per minute, 347 damage per minute uh, in the LPL playoffs. He is a kindred one trick, usually draws bands. I expected to draw bands at Worlds. And um, later on in the, well, at MSI, later on in the split and the playoffs with, with Tabe as the coach, they have learned to Kind of give Shun his carries and put Yagao on more uh, facilitator-oriented champions, looking at Annie. And I know Vagar has high DPS, but Vagar also has the cage, which I would consider facilitated, uh, a facilitation 
uh, ability. Um, Galio, things like that. Things that, you know, are not, you know, he's he's trying to set up, right? And they're giving Sean Kindred and things like that to try and carry. Um, I mean, they have to do stuff like that. Somebody has to be a facilitator on the top side of the rift here between Sean and Ben and Yagao. And, and usually it ends up being uh, Yagao because Ben really doesn't have that in his in, in his in his uh, wheelhouse, and that's kind of a drawback of him as well. Yagao, two international events, fifteen and nine between the two, two point two five KDA, eight oh six CS per minute, sixty two point eight KP. Going into Worlds last year, I had Yagao really lowly rated compared to other uh, major mids. It upset a lot of people. I believe Yagao still has those same issues. I think his champion pool is more like a puddle. I believe he is no longer a carry threat by any means. His Vigar looks nice, sure, and his Annie can find impact, but he is a facilitator now. And um, I don't know how good he really is at that. His two international experiences, he was gapped. 806 CS per minute is not, as, not acceptable. Out of a major region mid, internationally, um, 62.8 KP, so that means he's not even involved in two out of every three kills, more out of, more three out of every five, and, um, that's not great. 387 gold per minute, 473 damage per minute, three solo kills in these 24 games, on average down 125 gold, 7 CS, 230 XP, so he is behind in lane at 15 minutes as well, not not a great look. Um, you think about Worlds last year. He was against Caps, Jojo Pune, Showmaker, and uh, then in in the um, you know post group stage, we're looking at quarterfinals. He was against Larson, and then in semifinals against Faker. You'd like these numbers to be better because I, I'd argue the only top, uh, mid laner that should have gave him, you know, that I would say is clearly better than him is Showmaker. Caps is very talented, but. A uh, player from China or Korea, I expect to keep up with Caps. And, um, I mean, negative seven, when you take into account he played JoJo a couple times and played Larson, uh, you'd like you'd like more. Simply, you'd like more. Um, Worlds 2020 out in quarters. Worlds 2022 out in semis. LPL playoff stats, not great. Um, 4.8 KDA is good, but 7.8 CS per minute. He's behind in his matchups in the LPL, so he cannot he cannot do that at this event. Uh, luckily for them, they play in plans. People are going to say, oh, wow, look, you didn't know what you're talking about, about this player or that player. It's like, yeah, sure. What BLG does against Rainbow 7 is really indicative of what I'm saying. Like, uh, this is not going to be good enough when he has to play T1, Gen G, uh, JDG again, and I'd even argue Caps and G2 and things like that. You cannot you cannot be playing at this level. 68.7 KP, at least he's more um, involved to offset that, but he is giving up more farm. 396 gold per minute, 485 damage per minute. Bot lane, we have Elk. Elk played absolutely outstanding this split. He's one of my top three mid laners. He was on my all pro uh, picks in the top three or whatever. And I thought throughout playoffs, he was their MVP. A lot of people picked Yagao. I thought Elk was better. Um, Elk is an ex uh, just an outstanding player. In 2021, I was really hyped about him. And then in 2022, he fell off on Ultra Prime. Now he's with BLG and getting an opportunity and running with it. 5.3 KDA, 10 CS per minute, 66.4 KP. He gets fed. And he's getting fed against Ruler, against Leave, against um able against very good players so blg ran the gambit and they did a very good job in doing so and elk was able to show up in every step of the way um even against jdg i thought the second time that he was um you know decent 483 gold per minute 663 damage per minute he is the damage threat with 667 i mean clearly he is the guy on this team. And then at support, we have On. And this is definitely the most questionable spot on the team. They do have Lamau backing him up. Lamau being signed towards the end of the split. A veteran that I would not be shocked if On struggled in play-ins and they played Lamau. Only because I think Lamau has been in this moment before. And he is a solid player. He probably could be a veteran presence that this team could use 
in this moment, given that there's only Yagawa's relatively older and been here before. Ben's been here before, but he's still clearly playing in a way that I would argue is, is not very experienced. And then you have Sean and Elku who haven't been here before as well as on. So um, on very coin flippy, uh, 4.1 KDA, 69.9 KP. Um, you know, this team very skirmish oriented. You have Shun at 70%. So Shun at 5.8 and 70%. Like he, his numbers are very good. They're very good. But um, on, not as involved, doesn't roam as much, kind of just sticks to Elk's pocket and, um, hold, you know, puts his hand in his pocket and kind of just stays along with him. So, I mean, I think that that's the area where this team is going to going to have to uh, step it up is, is in the support role and also just team compositions trying to figure out how all these puzzle pieces go together um, as a bin fan as somebody that um, you know thought highly of elk I am interested in how this team does I really don't have a rooting interest because Saigon Buffalo is out so I mean we'll see how these guys do I think that getting out of play-ins will be relatively easy uh, it's just a matter of what happens after that um, but yeah so Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, like it, subscribe to the channel for daily League of Legends content. Follow me on Twitter, join the Discord, become a supporter, and thank you for watching.